today with an African perspective, a global perspective, and a social media perspective is a surprise conversation. It's not on your agendas, but it's going to be something that's going to be part of your Twitter streams and your conversations. I am pleased to welcome to the stage, and I'd ask them to please come on out, the head of marketing for Mashable, Stacy Green, who's going to be having a conversation with the co-chair of UN Energy, Dr. Kande Yumkela. Help me welcoming them to the stage. everyone for that warm welcome. I, I want to thank Mr. Yumkela for making it here today. As you can imagine, he is a very, very busy person at Rio Plus 20. And we were having a conversation backstage about how important energy is for this generation, our generation, the connected generation. But I was also fascinated by Mr. Yumkela's story. And so I'd, I'd love for you to share the audience how you ended up doing the work that you're doing and where you are today. Well, just think about it for a minute. If suddenly the power went out of here, just like that, no lights, it's all dark, but then your computers are also shut off. That's the reality I grew up in. And sometimes that blackout could last for a long time. Born in Sierra Leone, I'm from a village with less than 250 homes, so I know what energy poverty means. I went to university. Sometimes we studied with candlelight. Sometimes we have to go down river, wash three kilometers, come back because there was not enough energy to pump the waters into the dormitory. But the reality is, and the Secretary, Secretary General has put it correctly, access to energy is the golden thread that runs through everything in Rio. Without access to energy, we cannot achieve the Millennium Development Goals. But more importantly, it is about women, women and children. Women and children in some developing countries spend on average 20 hours a week to fetch firewood and to fetch water. Worst of all, because of indoor air pollution from the use of charcoal and animal waste for their primary energy source, we have two million deaths a year. Two million people die. 80% of them, 1.6 million, are women and children from indoor air pollution. That's worse than malaria. It is a social problem, it's an economic problem. Ah, but they cut down the trees as well to get that access to energy. 2.7 billion people have to do that every year. That's almost one third of mankind. We cannot have that in the 21st century. So this, this conference is very much about connecting the world and coming up with solutions. So as this connected generation, what should we be doing to address this? Well, you should join us in this campaign because access to energy is for young folks like you in Africa, in Asia, in Latin America, who need access, who need to be part of the, the digital revolution. Uh, thanks to mobile phones, people can communicate now. But yes, with solar technology, you can have a mobile phone anywhere. And that's happening in my village today. I didn't think that would happen five years ago. But it's about the next generation. More importantly, if we are to protect these ecosystems and keep the forests and the carbon sinks, people better have access to reliable, affordable energy. It's also about security and safety around the world. If the younger generation in other parts of the world, almost three billion of them, if they don't have prosperity, if their economies cannot grow, you will not have security in this world. People need jobs. The International Labor Organization tells us we need 600 million new jobs in the next 15 years. A lot of them in Africa, young Africans looking for jobs. They need jobs to share in your prosperity. So it is about intergenerational equity. It's about the next generation having prosperity, but also growth and opportunity and being part of this digital community. So you think energy is one of the ways we can close the equality gap? I, I believe so. Without access to energy, trust me on this, 2.7 billion using animal waste and charcoal for their cooking. Remember the mortality rates I showed you? It's, it's, it's about that e e fairness and equity around the world. Without energy, a lot of the prosperity we're looking at will not be spread. There will be discontent. There will be destroyed. But let me give you another number. 60 to 70% of the greenhouse gas emissions come from energy production, heating and cooling of buildings, transport industry. You cannot solve climate change without an energy revolution. But to reduce how much power we generate and how much emissions, you and I need to change how we use energy. On an average, some of you and myself, we have six, seven appliances at home that we live on standby. Somebody's generating the power to keep that on. Well, look at this room here. Look at all of us. <laughs> yeah. And the air conditioning and the SUVs and everything. Now, 
if you change how you use energy and you switch those lights off, the governments would have to build less power plants. Then there's less emission. So it's really about your generation. We've had fun. But you know, in, in, by 2030, if we continue to use energy that way and generate more and emit more, you may be in climate hell. You don't want that. So you have a role to play, and that's why we need you. To so send the information about the changes in behavior and habits that we need to reduce energy consumption, do energy savings, so that you have a prosperous world for the future. And everybody has to do their share. It's not about rich countries and poor countries. Everybody has a room in climate hell. So I want to end in a way that we can, we can bring this all together because it sounds like there's so much that we have to do and there's many conversations here and I'm sure at Rio Plus 20 and there's, there's different opinions on how it's going, but what's making you hopeful about this for this next generation? What makes me hopeful is that here in Rio, we have more commitments from companies and civil society groups than I ever imagined coming here. Uh, the Secretary General tomorrow will announce huge commitments in terms of cash, technology, and uh, uh, other kinds of support that we've been able to mobilize here because now the action begins. We want to connect at least 700 million people to modern energy services in the next 10 years. In other words, reducing energy poverty by half. We want to double the rate of energy efficiency improvement by 2030. We want to increase the share of renewables to about 30% of the global energy mix by 2030. If we do all three, we stay within two degrees, prosperity is spread, and I see real political movement here. I see a number of governments supporting this, but a number of young generation folks saying, hey, how can we help you send the message out so yes, at night we'll switch those lights out. So I feel very optimistic living here. And this is, I mean, you bring an, an African perspective, but this is a global, global perspective and point it, of view. It's all related. It is a global perspective. Online. It's good that an African is raising it for the world. And I'm an African who spent many, most of his years now, 27 years, living in the United States and Europe, where everything is great. Mm -hmm. But you know, the interesting thing is, carbon has no passports. Mm -hmm. When one pollutes somewhere, it, it spreads. So it's about all of us, but it's about inclusive growth. Our children and grandchildren want to be just like you. There's no two worlds here. If they're not happy, you will not be happy. So it is a message for the world. But yes, Africa is the most energy poor. But Africa happens to sit on most of the world's natural resources. We don't just want to be a source of raw materials, as has been happening for 600 years. We want our children to have prosperity. I want my children to have a BlackBerry, too, and an Apple computer. Thank you. And I think everyone in this room wants that and is here to make it happen. And thank you for your commitment and for spending some time with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you.